In this video, we're going to take a look at another trend called the electron affinity trend. So electron affinity is defined as the amount of energy that's released when an electron is added to a neutral atom to form a negative ion. So basically what you're doing is it's kind of the opposite of ionization energy. You're adding an electron. And then when you add an electron, the atom kind of pays you for that. So it pays you an energy. So the idea is that the more energy that the atom releases, the more likely it, it appreciated receiving that electron. So it would look something like this. You would rather than have energy here, so you have the atom plus electron. And now you're getting an electron, so uh, you're becoming negative. So negative one here plus energy. And that energy is on the product side. So it means it's, it's being given away. It's being given to you to pay you for that electron that you just gave to the atom. Um, so more energy that's released means the atom is happier to, re to receive that electron. So you can see the, the trend over here. Uh, for the uh, for the electron affinity, generally, the electron affinity increases as you go from left to right. So, for example, fluorine has a higher electron uh, electron affinity than lithium. There is an important exception to understand, though. We don't really count the noble gases in this trend. They actually have very very low electron affinities, and the reason that is, well, you might know why. Would they really want to receive an electron? Would they really be happy about that? Probably not, right? Because they already have a full valence shell. They don't need it anymore. But something like fluorine is pretty happy to receive an electron. So it would have a high affinity because it just needs one more to complete its valence shell. Um, but the main reason, if you want to explain that properly, um, why does fluorine have a greater electron, of, electron affinity compared to uh, lithium? Well, fluorine has a greater effective nuclear charge. It has more protons in a nucleus and the same number of shells. So it has it, it pulls electrons closer to itself more effectively compared to lithium. So it's more, we say, favorable, meaning that it's happy about it and it releases more energy to thank you for that. It pays you in more energy. The other trend you'll notice as well is that the electron affinity tends to uh, decrease going down a group. So francium would have a lower affinity compared to lithium. And the reason for that is, well, I mean, it's harder for something with more shells to accept an electron, right? The, the outer shell where the electron would come in is so far away from the nucleus, the atom probably doesn't want it or can't really att attract it very easily. So because there's more shells and more shielding, um, it's just not likely for an, for an atom to be happy um, if it has a lot of shells. So it'll likely have a lower electron affinity. That's why you have a higher electron affinity when uh, you have fewer shells and you're closer to the top. Again, the um, noble gases don't really count in this trend, even though it kind of shows they do here. They don't really count in this trend because they already have full valence shells. So let's look more at something like this over here. Let's say they stop at the halogens. Um, so for our halogens, um, you would say that, um, for example, fluorine has a higher electron uh, electron affinity than chlorine because it has fewer shells and is more happy attracting that electron compared to chlorine, which has more shells and there's more shielding in the way to prevent a, an effective attraction. Uh, so one thing I want to also mention is this is a table that shows electron affinity values. Um, and it looks a bit interesting because I said that electron affinity increases as you go from left to right. And um, then you go, well, isn't negative 60 larger than negative 328 in terms of numbers like this is closer yes it is but a, a big negative number means high electron affinity because that negative number means that this is how much energy was released so minus 328 from the atom that was released from the atom so the the higher the negative number the more negative the number is the higher that electron affinity is Okay, uh, because that means you release more energy and you're more happy about it. Remember, if, if, if you give me something and I'm happy about it, I'll pay, I'll throw tons of money at you, right? So it's kind of like if I go to a restaurant and you know I order food and the, the waiter or waitress or person serving me was was a very good waiter or waitress or person serving me and I would, um, I, I'd give them a higher tip if they were really good. Um, they brought me my food, I was super happy, I paid them more. So I have a high affinity for that person who was serving me. Um, but if the person, you know, was very rude, um, you know, maybe didn't smile at all or whatever be the case, um, maybe I'd, I'd give less tip. Um, and so I'd have a lower electron uh, affinity. I'm not getting, giving rid of my money, throwing away my money at that person because I just wasn't happy with the service. So you can see here the noble gases, their electron affinity values are in the positives more than zero, which is not good. It basically means they're not giving energy away. They're not happy with the, receiving the electron. They don't want to pay you an energy. That, that It's not worth it. It's not favorable for them. 
So um, we don't really look at those numbers very often, at least in grade 11. But if you do see those numbers, remember higher negative means more um, better affinity or higher affinity because you're giving away more energy, which means you're happier about it. You're paying more energy off. So just like any other trend, um, you should be able to uh, identify you know, elements that have a higher or lower affinity compared to others. Um, and so we'll go take a look at that. Before we do that, though, let's go take a look at this example here. So which of these atoms has a lower affinity and why? So if both of these atoms are getting an electron coming in. Um, and let's look at how these atoms differ. These atoms differ in terms of size. Here we have a smaller atom. Here we have a bigger atom. So which one is more likely to be happy to receive an electron? Remember, the bigger atom probably can't receive it very effectively because there's more shielding, right? So this probably won't receive it very effectively. The smaller atom will more, more, be more likely be more receptive of that electron because there's less shielding and the nucleus can attract the electron more effectively. So the smaller atom will have a higher affinity. Affinity essentially means an attraction for something. So the smaller atom will have a higher affinity compared to the bigger atom. This would be similar to comparing, let's say fluorine and chlorine. Chlorine would be a larger atom, fluorine would be a smaller atom. Fluorine's at the top here. So according to our trend, this would have a higher electron affinity. So there's a relationship between size and electron affinity as well. Generally, larger atoms have a lower affinity compared to smaller atoms, which have a higher affinity. And that explains that group trend that we saw earlier. So these are the practice problems that we're gonna go ahead and try out. Uh, let's go to our handouts here, fill in some blanks and try those practice problems out. So the electron affinity is a me measure of the energy um, that is uh, released, that is released, given off, released, when an electron is added to a neutral atom to form a negative ion. More energy is released. If more energy is released, that means that there's a greater electron affinity. Um, so the general equation is simply the atom um, plus energy. Nope, not energy, because we're not adding energy. We're adding electron this time, plus electron arrow. Since we add an electron, it becomes negative there, um, and it releases energy. So plus energy here, and energy is on the product side. Kind of the opposite of the, um, the uh, ionization energy. We switch where the energy and electron are because we're adding an electron as opposed to removing one. Um, and so we saw that electron affinity typically increases from left to right because we have a larger, um, a larger uh, effective nuclear charge. That works except for noble gases. Remember, noble gases have a low affinity because they already have a complete valence shell. Uh, and remember also that the, and the reason for that, again, was because of the greater effective nuclear charge makes the addition of the electron just more favorable towards the right side. Uh, and then the other trend we saw is that the electron affinity, usually going down a group, will decrease going down a group. Decreases from top to bottom, decreases down a group. And that's because you have more shells, uh, more shielding, and that makes the addition of the electrons even um, less favorable than, than before. So... Let's go ahead and um, try to uh, classify these or arrange these elements from um, over here, increasing electron affinity. So from uh, smallest to uh, biggest. So let's just take a look at, um, let's do silicon and phosphorus. So silicon would have a smaller electron affinity than phosphorus because it's towards the uh, left. So we want to go from smallest to biggest. So I'm going to put silicon first and then phosphorus. I'm leaving some space because I'm going to take a look at the other ones. We have sulfur. Um, so sulfur will be larger than phosphorus because it's to the right of um, phosphorus and affinity increases as you go towards the right. Oh, and then chlorine is even more to the right. So um, chlorine has an even larger affinity than um than sulfur. So it, this smaller, smaller, with largest being um, chlorine. Okay, now let's take a look at the decreasing. So decreasing is biggest to smallest. Uh, so let's take a look at um, um, the biggest one. So it looks like the biggest one is going to be fluorine. We can spot that right off the bat because it's all the way at the top here um, and all the way to the right. So fluorine is the biggest one for sure. Um, and then let's compare it to other things. Let's compare, let's compare, um, so let's compare oxygen and 
um, potassium. So oxygen is more to the right and also higher than potassium. Um, so higher and to the right. So oxygen is larger than potassium. So I'm going to put oxygen over here, potassium over here, because we're going from biggest to smallest. Um, and then let's take a look at, uh, at cesium. Um, cesium would have, compared to potassium, a lower um, affinity because it's lower on the group there. And as we know, we go, we go, we lower the affinity as you go down a group. So even smaller than potassium there. Um, and so we have cesium uh, done, potassium done, oxygen done, fluorine done. Let's look at phosphorus. So where would phosphorus go compared to some of these? So phosphorus looks like it's larger than um, larger than sodium because it's higher up and to the right. So if it's larger than sodium, it's going to be before so. Uh, sorry, potassium. Um, if it's larger than potassium, how does it compare to oxygen? Well, oxygen is larger than phosphorus. Uh, because oxygen is more to the um, to the top and right as well. So uh, right now we have, let me just rewrite this, F, O, P. And the last one is really um, helium. And so that's a tough one because you might think, oh, it's all the way to the right and top, so it would have the highest affinity. Um, but in reality, uh, we know that it probably doesn't have the highest affinity because it's a noble gas. So that would probably have the lowest affinity out of all of these ones here. So uh, this being a noble gas has the lowest affinity for electrons. So we have larger to smaller all the way that way. Um, and that should be our arrangement. Uh, that was quite a few to arrange. We had to think about it back and forth and try to go, you know, one pair at a time to make sure you can do that. And our next question we have to uh, then for each pair, select the atom in which it's easiest to add an electron um, and then explain your choice. What does this mean for electron affinity? So I think I lost the pairs there. Uh, here are the pictures. So the, the pairs are in the pictures over here. So um, let's write refer to pictures in slide deck. So uh, to which is it easiest to add an electron? So let's take a look. So uh, our first pair we're comparing is oxygen and fluorine. Which one is it easier to add an electron to? Well, let's see, they have the same number of shells, the same number of shells, and even without looking at the periodic, I'm gonna try doing this, doing this without looking at the periodic table. But notice that oxygen has more protons than, uh, sorry, fluorine has more protons than oxygen. So because they have the same number of shells, but fluorine has more uh, protons, um, I'm gonna go with, it's easier to add an electron to fluorine. Um, so what this question is basically asking is, which one has a higher affinity? Uh, because the one with the higher affinity would be the easiest to add an electron to. So definitely fluorine for this one, um, and that's because it has a greater effective, effective nuclear charge, which basically means it just has a higher electron affinity. So for the first pair, pair one, I'm going to choose fluorine. Um, fluorine has a greater effective nuclear charge, so you represent that. Um, and I'm going to say uh, this means a greater electron affinity. And then for pair two, we can try the same idea, but let's just take a look here. Pair two between lithium and sodium. Uh, so um, it looks like sodium has more protons than lithium, but look at the number of shells. There's one, two, two shells. Um, and then over here for sodium, we have one, two, three shells. So there's more shells. I think there's more of a shielding effect for sodium. So it might be harder to add an electron to sodium just because there's more of a shielding effect happening here. Um, so I think it's gonna be easier to add it to lithium. Uh, and I always like to actually double check my work. I should have done that for the oxygen and fluorine too. Let's just double check here. Fluorine's more towards the right compared to oxygen. So that means that it's going to have a higher affinity. And then lithium is on top of sodium. So remember that higher up means you have a higher affinity. So uh, that's correct. Lithium would actually have a higher electron affinity um, compared to uh, sodium. So um, for my pair two over here, pair two, my choice is at lithium would have the, um, it would be easier to add an electron to lithium 
uh, and that's because uh, lithium, or I'm going to put sodium, has more shielding since it has more shells. And I'll say that uh, this means this means that lithium has a greater electron affinity. And so that there answers my question for um, that aspect there. And that also basically means that, um, for example, uh, lithium, its electron affinity, if I were to give it a number, would be more negative than the number for sodium. Uh, so if we take a look at that over here, uh, the we had negative 60 for lithium and negative 53 for sodium. So what that basically means is that um, lithium is releasing more energy as it accepts an electron, which means it's happier. It's given a bigger tip, let's just say, um, because it has a less shielding effect there. Um, so or just remember that the important exception for this rule here is that noble gases have low affinities because they already have a full valence shell.